Hello everyone, thanks for clicking on this video. This is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks and I'm so glad you joined me. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this adorable, beautiful backpack. <laughs> it's just, you know what, It's um, the kids are gonna love it, but even some adults would like this too. It's really, you know, a very fun um, item to have. So I uh, thank you for joining me on it. I used my Addy 46 needle machine. You can use your Center 48 if that's what you have. I also used my Clover Wonder Knitter for the cords and I used Bernat Super Value yarn in white and red and pink. Um, and I bought that little bear that when you um, squeeze him he lights up um, from Dollarama for like a dollar seventy five and then I just took apart a, a keychain that I had that um, I didn't need and and added it to the bear and and embellished the little backpack with the with the teddy bear so you too can do that as well <laughs> it just makes a big difference something little but it adds to it so um anyways uh thanks again for joining me please hit that like um thumbs up because that's how youtube promotes my videos to a wider channel so i'd appreciate that very much okay so for this project we're going to need waste yarn um so grab a color of waste yarn that's that's um, easily that you can see easily against your working yarn, a contrasting color, um, or one that's just uh, very obviously different. And you're going to rotate your barrel till your last white and your first black needle are in line with your yarn guide. And then, oops, you're not going to open it. You're going to drop that into the middle. Then you're going to go behind that first black needle. We're doing a long tail cast on, and in front of the next, behind and in front, all the way around. Using waste yarn allows us to uh, make a flat edge on our panel once we take it off. If we didn't use waste yarn, then we would cinch it closed like a beanie. Um, but we need flat edges on this particular project, so we're going to use waste yarn at the front and at the end, okay? So when you get around, you should be at the last white needle and you go behind it. You're going to put your yarn into your guide, close it, and then crank out as many rows of waste yarn as what you are um, typically comfortable with doing. I never do less than seven. I always say seven or eight, but you know what? Sometimes if I feel like it, I do a little bit more, <laughs> especially on the end. At the beginning, your waste yarn doesn't unravel um, easily, but at the end of your project, it, it does. So um, I, I stick to generally seven or eight rows at the beginning, and then sometimes um, I, I'll do quite a bit at the end, maybe even 10 or, or 12, depending if I'm going to leave my project sit for a while. If I get at it to close the end right away, then it's not as necessary to do as many rows. But there we go, I'm just gonna help that yarn come out of the ball there. And I'm gonna continue around till I get seven rows of waist yarn, and then I'll see you back. Okay, I'm coming around to the end here. I did a couple more just because I had snagged a stitch and I just didn't wanna have that at the top. Um, okay, so we're gonna keep going. And before I get to that black, um, marked divider that I put in I, I take a permanent black marker and I mark that red divider that's between my last white and my first black needle so I can always see the end of the row coming around but before I, I get there on my last row of waist yarn I'm going to change my row counter to zero so I'm ready to begin when I get there okay okay so I got my last white my first black in line I'm going to cut off my waist yarn open the latch stick it in between the last white the first black and I'm going to grab my working yarn once I get my waist yarn out of the way here. Okay, so I'm using um, Bernat Super Value Yarn in white. And this is a brand new ball, so I wanna make sure that I'm helping it out until it comes out really easily um, to prevent my stitches from tucking. Okay, so here we go. Let me find my end. And we're going to insert that end into the yarn guide, into the middle, close the latch, hold both of those ends. It's in the middle there. I only crank out three or four needles then I take both ends of my working yarn and I pull it so that this one goes over the over the latch and I have to over the divider and I have to help it sometimes and that keeps my stitches uniform here and then I'm going to give that just one tie and then my counter is ready to go and I am going to crank out 120 rows of this color okay I'm going to start off slow just to make sure that uh, every stitch is catching there. I generally go at a very um, even slower pace, similar to this, um, when I'm knitting. I don't, I don't go too fast because I like my stitches to be, um, I, like I don't want to miss a stitch. Sometimes It's so frustrating to get tucked stitches 
we all know that. Um, and so sometimes I think if I take my time just a little bit more than I really want to, <laughs> then it will um, save me some time in the long run because I won't be dealing with as many tucked stitches. Not that I get a lot because I figured out the feel of the machine, but but I do get I do get some. I had one on my on my waist yarn here. But I actually didn't bother fixing that one because it's not part of my project. So I'm gonna go around and we're gonna complete one. Oops, see there I got one, so I'm gonna go back and fix that. Actually, why don't I do that while I have you with me? I spoke a little too soon, I guess. So I'm gonna open that latch. Now it didn't take this stitch yet, so I'm 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 still safe to do this one. So I'm just gonna back it up a little bit. I actually didn't tuck it yet. I just I can pick that up and I can just put it over those red teeth and continue. So I caught it on time. So I was gonna just show you a tucked stitch fix, but I, I don't need to now. But one thing I gotta be weary of, leery of is this stitch over here because if you back it up too far, um, the the stitch that's coming around will let go. And this one might and it might not. Let's see. No, we did good. If you get a tuck stitch and you don't know how to fix it, um, go to my channel, click on videos, and then go down and uh, go to, to how to fix a tuck stitch, and I will show you. Um, and you can do it that way, okay? So keep cranking until you get to row, uh, until it starts to touch the table, which is generally for me between row 55 and 60. And when I get there, I'll, I'll uh, show you what I do to roll it up into a donut. If, if you, if you um, aren't new and you know how to, what to do with that, then just keep going till you get to row 120. Um, otherwise, uh, stop at about when it starts to touch the table and I'll show you how um, we, per, we put some tension around the, the barrel here by rolling it up into a donut. Okay, so keep going and we'll see you soon. All right, so I'm at row 52 and it's already touching. Um, I actually had it rolled up and I just unrolled it to show you. Um, when it gets to, to the table, like um, before that, when it first starts to touch the table, then pick it up and roll it <clears throat> just like that. And that will put a little bit of, of weight, but also tension along the rim of the barrel here all the way around so that it helps to make your stitches even. I'm finding with this Bernat uh, Super Value White Yarn that I have to put a bit of tension on it. So um, I hold it between my two fingers like this and I just pinch just ever so slightly. Not very, not very much at all. Boy, that reminded me of my grandma. She always said <laughs> ever so slightly. And so you just pinch just a little bit with just a bit of tension. And what that does is it... Um, is it keeps this this line right here not not so slack that's the word I'm looking for like if you don't put any tension on it then it gets a little bit slack and sometimes it then it misses that little hook and then it goes up over the hook instead of under the hook and that's when it comes back around you get a you get a tucked stitch okay if you put a little bit of tension on it then it lines it up so that it goes right basically just like millimeters just a mill like a fraction of a millimeter probably behind that little um tip that's picking up the yarn so a little bit of tension keeps it in its place and then the needle can't miss it okay so go ahead if, if you're having a, a problem with um tuck stitches try putting just a bit more tension on it and see if that helps you out okay so keep going until you get to row 120 and when you do see me back Alright, so I am on my 120th row, just finishing it up, and I see this black divider coming around, so I know I'm close to the end, so I'm going to slow it down until I get to the last white needle, the last black needle. And you know what, once I put a medium tension on my yarn and here, my stitches knit up so beautifully. Like, this is just so gorgeous. I'm loving it. Okay, so you're going to cut your end, leave a little bit of a tail because... Um, we're going to need it for sewing. Just the ends close later. You don't need to leave that that big. But just uh, a bit of one. Okay. And then we're going to take our waist yarn. We're going to insert it into our yarn feeder in between the last white and the last black. Grab both of those just so that you have some tension on that last white um, needle that is, is picking up that last stitch. I'm going to give it one little tie. And then I'm going to go around. And I'm going to do 7 to 10 rows. All my videos say do seven to eight rows, but I am changing that when it comes to the end of the rows. Um, if you watched any of my previous videos, you know that that, that works, but um, sometimes it starts to unravel and, and uh, you know, it hasn't wrecked my projects or anything, but I, 
just think at the end, because it comes loose so easily, um, put a few more rows on, especially if you're going to tuck this away and, um, and pick it up later to finish the ends. But what I do, and what I would encourage you to do, is after every panel, start with this end, close it, and then go to the other end, close that other end, or leave that one um, until you get more panels done. That doesn't matter. But always, always finish up the, if you're doing a flat edge, always finish up, um, close that off on your panel when you take it off the machine. And and then you'll just save yourself some some grief later if, if you throw it in a bin or something and then you pick it up a while later and it's been unraveled just because the bin was moved back and forth and it friction rubbed against it and it started to unravel. You just don't want that. So... Go ahead and knit your rows of waste yarn. I'm almost done here, so I'm running out of out of uh, out of yarn. So I'm going to stop there. And you know, with with waste yarn, I don't need to make it to the end of the row because, um, and I'm not going to because my yarn is running out. So I'm going to just end it there because it's not going to affect any of my stitches or anything. So I can I can just end it off there, and then I'm going to start cranking. Second time around, it will come loose. second time around of, from where I left my last uh, stitch okay so don't let that fool you we're, we're good here okay all right so there we go we've got our donut taken off the machine it's beautiful and we're going to make two of these um, two of exactly the same of what you just did waste yarn 120 rows waste yarn but before I make my second one I'm going to close off this the ends on this one so join me for that and then we'll make the second panel all right, so unroll your donut. Very gently, you don't have to go all the way yet. We always stretch my, my um, project widthwise and lengthwise to get all the stitches to line up. Sometimes your attention is a little bit different from row to row, just because maybe with, without even realizing it. And so when you, when you do that, you just line them up and it just softens up your, your project and makes it so beautiful. I'm going to finish that after I close this up. I'm not gonna unwind the whole thing right now, but we're gonna take this end don't let this last string fool you because I stopped in the wrong uh, in in a place that wasn't the end. But go where you're where you started where you tied your little knot there. Undo that. Got this end rolled up in my donut there. Take it to the outside of your work. But before you do that, um, take a look at at uh, how this is. When you see your your waist yarn, am I in the camera here? When you see your waist yarn. The, the loop that it's coming out of, see this loop here? The waist yarn is strung through that. That is your first stitch. You're going to take your stitch marker, which for me, in this case, is always bobby pins. I just love how they work. They're long enough, they don't fall out, and they're easy to take out when I get to the end. Okay, then you go to the left of that and you see where, where your working yarn is coming out. And your working yarn is attached to this loop right here. It's coming up and underneath this bottom, this row that's below it. So you're going to take the top one, the very top stitch, and that's your last stitch. It's gonna be considered your last stitch um, for our counting purposes, okay? And so then you're gonna take your hook. I use a 4.5 millimeter, a five works nice too, um, or whatever you're comfortable with, but I, I believe 4.5 or five is the perfect size for closing your tubes in my opinion um so then because we have 46 stitches on this i'm going to just raise my camera a little bit because we have 46 stitches on this panel we want to find our our very middle ones on the side here so we're going to count to 23 we know 23 and 24 are our middle stitches so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. You see why waste yarn is so important? You're gonna, in a different color, you're gonna put your hook under the 24th one because that begins the corner going this way, okay? So we got the end here and we got this side, okay? So we're going to put our hook under that 24th stitch, then under the 23rd one, pick it up and bring it through that loop. Then go to the bottom here, pick up that next one, get that little leaf out of the way, Oops, sorry, but buddy, there we go. Got him. Okay, and then back and forth to the top and the bottom. Now again, I'll mention this just because it's been mentioned in my comments that why do I go, why do I go over and pick it up um, when most people when you crochet you go under, um, but it doesn't matter because all you're, all you're needing to do is put the loop through the loop, and so however you pick it up is is not going to affect the look of your project. So just so you know that I grab it from the top. Okay, and you go back and forth 
And when you're not talking to someone, you count so that you make sure that you pick up all of your stitches. Starting that first one that you put on your, on your hook is counted as number one. Um, and you go all the way until you get to 46. Um, and that's very important because you don't want to miss a stitch. If you miss a stitch, that row will start to drop. Now, the beauty of having a contrasting color like this um, is that you will rarely drop a stitch. It's easy to see where they are, okay? All right, so we're gonna just keep going. I have this a little further from my body than I would if I wasn't in a camera, so I gotta fiddle a little bit with it, but here we go. All right. You know, I don't know if I've mentioned this on camera before. I know I've put it in my comments but um, below, but I have another channel. It's called Storytime with Nana. I will put the link in the comments below in that I make. In the, um, I always call it description, but when you see the little words under the video and then it has dot, 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 and then more, click on that and it'll open up my, my um, description box actually where I... Uh, tell you what yarn and what machine etc that I'm using and I'll put a link there for a story time with Nana. I have like um, 100 and I think 75 books. Let me just stop that right now and go. So I grabbed this. I'm on the last one. This was 45. So I picked up the stitch with my stitch marker on it, put it through the loop on the hook. Then I'm going to go over and I'm going to pull up on that, that uh, stitch marker, bobby pin on the 46 and put it through sometimes when you get to the end of the row it's a little bit harder to see those last two stitches so that's why the bobby pins just work so beautifully then i'm going to yarn over and pull it through anyways i have about 175 books on my site on my page there i started that group the same time i started or that facebook um, channel the same time i started this one actually i've got um well over 300,000 views on those books. Um, I, I go to the library and I choose books that I know the kids are going to love. Um, and, and they're just classic books that are great, wholesome stories. And, uh, and I read them to your children. And again, like I'm getting lots and lots of views, but kids don't hit the subscribe button. And I, I'm, I'm asking that if you want to have your kids read those books or listen to those books so that you can knit <laughs> and have some extra time to do whatever you need to do. Um, trust that they're wholesome books, but also please hit that subscribe button because um, I'm trying to get that channel monetized and, and it takes a thousand subscribers. Um, I know it's a very popular channel. I'm getting tons and tons of views every day on it. Um, people just are, are not realizing that it would help me if they hit that subscribe button. So enough of that. This is, um, we've got this and thank you very much. <laughs> We've got this done, and this end is seamed, and now we're going to unravel the rest of our donut. And we're going to do the same thing, okay? We're, I'm not going to do that in camera, but we're going to untie that. And we're going to, this, this end looks a little bit different when it comes to the waist yarn and the working yarn coming out of your stitches. So I'll just explain that to you if you're new. When you pull on your waist yarn here, it trails back and comes through this loop here. You're going to put your first stitch marker on that loop. Then when you look to the left of it, you will see that there are two loops there, one on top of the other. That's the very next row. This one, the bottom one is in line with this stitch, but that's not the one you want to choose. You want to take the one that's on top of it, okay? And then you count around and you close your tube the exact way that I just showed you to do the other end. And then you make a duplicate. You do an exact other tube just like this and close the ends. And when you're done that, see me back. All right, so we've got it all closed off and it's looking beautiful. Um, and the other side that we, we did, of course, that waist yarn just unravels with no problem. It just comes off um, very easily, but this beginning one is a little different. So if you're not sure how to take that off, roll up the edge until you get to the very top um, row of, of yarn here. And you'll see that, that the little loops of the stitch are, are around that, okay? Pinch the stitch and then pull on this. Go about five or six stitches in, okay? And then you're gonna go further. Now that you've got it started, you can take even up to 10 stitches is, is fine as I, I do that and it works fine. Roll it up so that you see where that little loop is going over that strand of yarn. Pinch that loop and pull. You've gotta do this for the first row only, okay? So roll it up so you make sure Make sure that you get that top one. If you get the second one, you're going to get a knot back here. So always make sure it's the top row. Pinch the stitch and pull it. And if you do this technique, this really is a very easy way to remove this yarn. And uh, it's really a no fail. I, 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 I never, well, 
never, never say never. I rarely have a knot or have a problem when I do it this way. Okay, pulling it out until I, I think I'm almost at the end of there. Yeah, I got one more there, so I'm gonna pinch it, pull it, and then you'll see, now it just will unravel with no problem. Then you can roll it up into a little ball and reuse it if it's reusable, okay? All right, so take that off, get your waste yarn off, and you've got your um, two tubes finished, or your tube finished, and you're gonna make a second one exactly like it, and then when you're done, we'll meet again. All right, so once we have that done and we have all of our sides beautifully sewn up, oh, don't they look so pretty? We're going to now join down the middle. So we're gonna put one panel on top of the other, and then we're gonna do the braided join. <clears throat> I have a video on my channel teaching you how to do this, but, um, so, but I'm gonna do it quickly here. We're going to line up our sides just like so. Um, and we're going to take, make sure that the stitches on both sides, let me just grab my little needle here, that the stitches on both sides, that the wide part of the V is going down. So here see, you see the point of the V here, and that stitch finishes with the wide part going up. You wanna make sure that that's the same on both sides, okay? So I use this tail to sew the top stitch um, at the end, so I usually go down to the second stitch. Now I don't like this hook, it's too big, so I'm gonna grab a smaller one. If you grab too big of a stitch, it, um, I thought I had grabbed this one. If you grab too big of a stitch, it's too hard to get in there. So I like a 4.5 millimeter is my go-to for almost everything when I'm circular knitting. So you go down into that second stitch, you pick up that bar. Then you go to over to the other side, you pick up that bar, and you put it through the bar that's on your hoop loop. <laughs> Look. Oh my goodness. You know what? I just finished cleaning so much. Um, I've been I've been on a cleaning rampage since Christmas and I finished everything that I wanted to do. I finished today um, and I just sat down with a coffee and my um, knitting in hand and I just need to like slow down a little bit here. So we're going to you got your first two stitches done. Uh, you're going to count down two. So you're going to miss this next bar and you're going to go down to the next one. You're going to pick it up, put it through the loop on your hook. You're going to miss that one, go to the next one, put it through the loop on your hook. Now how I just do it is I count one, two, one, two, one, two, and because we have 120 stitches um, on each panel, this will, this, this will work out evenly when you get to the bottom. Uh, you're not going to have one panel that's longer than the other. Even if when you held it beside each other, it looked like one was longer, that's all because of the way you, the tension you used when you stretched it out after. Okay, but when you start seaming it together, it's going to all come together beautifully because you have the same amount of stitches. Okay, so you're going to continue this process all the way down. And if you need to see this taught in a um, slower version where I'm just teaching this, then um, look that up on my channel and, and I'll show you how to do that. It's really an, a simple technique, but it makes such a pretty um, outcome. So this is going to be the middle of our bag. Okay, down the front and down the back. And on the sides, we're gonna do with the invisible join. So go ahead, finish this all the way down. And when I get to the end, I'll show you how I finished off and then we'll move on to the sides, okay? All right, so I've made it to the end, um, and I have the tail from this other side that uh, I've got left there, and I'm going to loop it over, bring it through that, that last loop that I had. And then I'm going to take my needle, needle, and I'm going to fasten that off just a little bit better. I'm going to tie a knot. Go in through that first stitch there, tie a knot. Pull it tight. Looks pretty straight to me. And then I'm going to weave it in. I'm not gonna do a d double knot because I don't want a little bump there. Um, I, if I weave it in uh, three times, it's two or three times, it's not gonna come loose. So um, I tie, when I tied that first knot, I pulled it really tight. So weave it in and out three times. Tie off, cut off. There we go. Now we've got our middle panel sewn. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to, you'll see that, that there is an inside, that's where I had a tuck stitch and I fixed it, but it's on the inside. So otherwise I would take my hook, my loom hook and I would, I'll show you. I would just play with that and I would just lo loosen the one side that's tight. Couple 
it, it's for a couple rows over as well, and then you do it on the other side. And that's how you make what you had fixed look like it's it's um not a different tension, okay? And you just play with it until you get it right. I actually generally do this while it's still on the machine, but I must have missed doing that one well enough. So there we go. So you fix that, and I'll do that a little bit better too. Make sure that the inside of the seam, there is a difference in how it looks. The inside is facing up. Then you're gonna take the other end and you're gonna fold it over, okay? Just like so. Then we're gonna go to an end. And we're going to fold it down a seam. We're gonna find our side seam. And we're going to do it so that the wide part of the V is still facing to the left. Okay, because we're going to start from the right and come up. And we're going to put these together. And then we're going to thread our needle with the same color yarn. And you need to have the length of about one and a quarter times the length of the, the seam that you're sewing, just so that you have enough there. Okay, so I'm going to follow that back up because I kind of lost it there. Okay, and then it's going to twist here because you're going from, you're on two different rows there, but that's okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to just take your needle and you're going to find the bar that's there and just go through one stitch. Okay, so but for now what we're going to do is we're going to find those two rows that we're working on. This is called the invisible seam and we're going to pick up two bars. Go between those stitches. You're going to pick up two bars. See how you have two bars on your on your needle and you're going to pull through. Okay? Then you're going to go over to the other side. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to pick up two bars and you're going to pull it through. Now, where you came out, we came out of this stitch. I'm going to go into that same space and I'm going to pick up two bars. And then I'm going to go on the other side and where my thread is coming out, I'm going to pick up those two bars. So you're picking up every bar. And in, when we did the invisible or the braided joint, we missed a bar all the time on each side. But this one, you want to make sure every bar is caught. Okay, so I'll pick up two there. Get this little tail keeps giving me hassles. Get out of my way. Okay, and then we're going to do this. And you're going to do that about halfway up. And when you get halfway up, um, come back and see me. And I will show you how we pull this tight. You can pull it tight now too, but I, I just find that um, it, you know, when, on a on a panel that's this length, going halfway up is is fine. You don't have to stop every ten stitches or so and and pull it. Okay, so keep going till you get about halfway done, and then come back on, and I'll show you what we do. All right, so I'm about halfway up, maybe a bit better, and I'm going to pull on both ends. So I'm going to take the working end that is up at the top and the working end that's at the bottom or the end that's at the bottom and I'm going to take those two and I'm just going to pull pull them out gotta let go of my needle here pull them out and look how that just pulls all those stitches together don't pull so hard that you you snap it because then you'll have to start over but it just pulls that together and seams it up and you can't even tell that there was um a join in there because you grabbed the what you had the the V stitches going the same direction it just makes that it puts these stitch rows in order and makes them the same and it, you don't have a, a mismatched bar that's left in there so that's why it's important to have um the wide end on both sides facing up okay so we're going to continue doing that same thing but we're only going to go till about um an inch and a half from the top on and that's about seven or eight stitches from the very top is where you're going to stop, okay? And once we get to that point, then we will we will um, pull it tight. All right, so when you get to that point, you're going to take your yarn end and you're going to just seam this closed, making sure that you are getting in the same stitch, okay? On both the same um, distance down on both sides, okay? So just a little bar, just like so. and tighten that off. I'm going to give that another knot because it's important that that stays secure. And then I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to hide it down so I've got my opening on both sides about like that. So I think um, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches down. I've sewed in 
closed on the 8th. All right, so go ahead and do that on the other side and then we will get back together. All right, so our bag is coming together so beautifully. It's just looking so great. I hope you're loving it. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're going to take it and you're gonna put it completely inside out. Okay, take it and turn it inside out. Okay, then you're going to, you see where you've seamed it down the side there? You're going to fold this, well, first you're gonna take a needle and you're going to thread it with a piece of yarn that's white or whatever color your purse is or your bag is. And we're going to go over to the right side if you're right-handed and left side, I'm sure, if you're left-handed. And you're going to fold it down to where your crease was made, okay? And then on the side there, you're just gonna, you're going to, first of all, you're gonna make sure it's the side, there it is. Find that side. You're gonna just secure your corner, okay? So I'm just gonna go through all the layers there. I'm gonna pick up my corner. And I'm going to tie a little knot, okay? And so I've got my little opening there, okay? And so then I'm going to, you can take uh, some pins and you can pin this down so it stays even, but, but you know, it's not that big of a panel, so you should be able to eyeball it pretty decently um, but if you know if you really need to this is like when it's folded down it's about one and a half so then take this one and a half well something like that anyways once you this this should have been a little bit tighter there but I'll, I'll nab that when I get to that point but do it how you feel the most comfortable doing it so that you get this straight okay and so then you're going to just Go in and take little stitches because I don't want to see a big line on the other on the um, right side of this. And then go back down, just grab a little bit on that other end and come up. And don't pull so tight that it puckers. I just want it to be secure, okay? So go down and pull up, okay? And you're going to do that all the way along this seam right here, along the edge here. Um, so if you if you just go at the top of the edge, it's easier than going in between here, but wh wherever you want to catch it. Whatever is easiest for you, there's no right or wrong. You can go in here and come up. Just like that. Or you can just go under the top like what I did here, just how I started, just at the very base of that little ridge that's there and, and sort of underneath. Whichever way you want to do it, is fine, it's not going to affect the project. Um, so you see that that's all, that's all sewn down and I'm gonna just turn it and show you on the other side. And you have no pulling there. I have a little bit of pulling here because you heard it snag a little bit. So I'm just gonna pull up on those stitches. And so basically it's, it's invisible there, but if you have a little bit of tucks there, it doesn't matter because um, they're gonna pull the bag closed with a drawstring and, uh, and you're not gonna see that anyways. But keep going around until you get all the way around your whole circle, um, making sure that you, of course, um, don't seam close these little loops here because that's where we're gonna pass our drawstring. All right, so go go ahead and finish that. And when you get that done, it's so exciting, you're gonna love it. <laughs> when you get that done, get your handy dandy little Clover Wonder Knitter out that I um, showed you how to use on, on the previous video and put your little three pronger on it. Or um, you can use your Addy egg. Uh, that would probably work too. I don't know because I don't have one, but I'm, I ordered one today, so it should be coming soon. I'm just gonna, yeah, it's just, I'm, I thought, why not? Just, just get one, Shelly. Um, you'll use it lots. So I did, and you should too. So if you don't have an Addy egg, you go get one. You order it, and you just say, you know what? I do a lot of crafting and, and I do a good job, so I'm gonna buy myself an Addy egg. Okay, you go ahead and do that and we'll all have little Addy eggs and we'll just come up with some new projects. Okay, all right, so keep going and uh, get your project finished all the way around the circle. And when you're done that, I will see you then. All right, so you have that done and it's looking beautiful. All sewn up on the inside. Ooh, there's something in there. Let's take that out. <laughs> That's where those little things are. <laughs> I was looking for them. <laughs> Anyways, because I this is the next day. I had put things away and I'm always running around looking for those crazy things. I thought, ah, I put them somewhere and I don't know where they are, but there they are. 
<laughs> okay, so anyways, moving on. Oh, boy, boy. Okay, so, you know, we, <laughs> our projects can be beautiful just like this, but I am a firm believer that if you do the tiny little extras, um, it will make it even that much better. And we're going to make our corners round just like that. And you know what? I'm doing it the same way we did on my slipper video um, to do our heel. I did one side for you just so you can see the difference. This looks more rounded and this is still pointy, which if you prefer to leave it like that, it's beautiful that way too. So you just be you and do whatever you like, but I'm going to show you how I do this. I'm going to turn it inside out again. And then you're going to take your corner. I'm not going to sew it on, on video here because um, I'm just going to show you what I do. Okay. You're going to make sure that your, your, you know where your your base is so sometimes when you're playing around and let me just grab something here when you're playing around or when you're trying to fold it over and stuff you lose track of where the center is so or the base it is so just put that there so you have a guideline okay that's where your base is going to be i'm going to move it even farther down because it will be in my way just so your point when you're sewing it down you'll see what i mean in a second is on that line and not you know, crooked. Okay. So then you're going to take this little point here, just like so, and you're going to fold it down. And you see what I mean now about that guide? This is just a little guide shows you where the point is. So you're not doing it like this. Um, cause when you have it folded up like this, you can't see where your center is, where the base is. Okay. And you're just going to take just a little piece and fold it up just like that. Not lots, just a little. And you're going to put yarn on your needle and you're going to first seam down this little point. Just sew it down and secure it nice and tight. Then you're going to go up one side, make that nice and tight, up the next side. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go across here, okay? So you've got a whole triangle sewn, okay? Um, make sure you don't grab the side here when you're sewing um, this, this part up here. You wanna just sew it to the base, just like that. Just to the base, just like that. So you're going to make a line just here. Okay, and, uh, and then that will give you your rounded corner. So you go ahead and do that. I'm gonna leave that in there because I have to sew this one too. Go ahead and do that. And then what you're going to do, I'm gonna just tell you the next step, is you're gonna take that beautiful Clover Wonder Knitter that you have, or your Addy Egg, whichever you have, and you're going to make your straps, okay? I made these 52 inches long unstretched. If I was to stretch them like this, they'd be a lot longer, but I just hung my, my tape measure and I hung this from the top of the tape measure and measured it down unstretched and they're 52 inches long each. Um, and I already tried them um, on the bag to see if that was the right length. And it is, which is why I put them in the bag and forgot where they were. Okay. So um, that is what you're going to do next. You're going to finish your corners and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to make your, your cords, two of them, 52 inches long each. And then when you're done that, you're going to leave your bag um, inside out, but you're gonna grab one of your cords and one of the ends, one of the tails. If you have a central, you um, like the bigger center, you probably have one of these large pink needles. If not, then you'll have to just find something else to use. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to thread that one end through and then I'm gonna tie one knot one tie just so that it stays on there because I'm going to put this end in first. If I do this end, of course, it's going to snag and, and uh, not work properly, but you're going to find one of your side seams and you're going to put that end in and you're going to slowly feed it through. Okay. And then you're going to pull it, keep going. It's fairly easy to do actually. And then you're, cause you've got a, a wide enough space there to get it in. And you're gonna continue feeding it through until you can put your fingers in there, oops, and help it, okay? So you're gonna pull it part way through, then you're gonna continue going around until you get back out um, of where you went in to here, okay? So keep doing that and then, and then I'll see you back. All right, so once that's done and you have your first one in there and your ends are on this side, you're going to then take your other strand so you started this first strand from this side and went all the way around and it came out this end. Now you're gonna start the other strand from the other side and go all the way around and come out this end so that your, um, your loose ends are both on either side, okay? So that's what you're gonna do. So then what you're going to do is you're going to thread your needle with red yarn 
And then you're going to, I'm gonna just tie it in a knot so that I have a double strand there. You likely don't need a double strand, but I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> just because okay and so then you're gonna take your two strands that you're gonna do this to the same to both sides you're gonna take your two strands you're going to just seam them together so just a light seam. it doesn't matter you don't have to be really fancy here I'm gonna go through that loop maybe that's why I did that because then it just uh, holds it in place and then I'll hide those later and then you're going to come down to that corner that's on the same side you're gonna put your hand in there um, and you're gonna, going to, into that little dip that you created from when you sewed that, you're going to put your needle in there. Pull that through. Let me see if I can get a better angle on this. Pull that through. And then you're going to just come back and forth. And you're going to sew this down flat. Okay? So you're going to just put that down there. And you're going to just sew it into that, where that little corner is. You're going to just, it's hard with my hand in there. You're going to just... Um, Seam this down nice and flat with a straight edge. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then, well, I'm going to come, I'll do a couple stitches here. I'm going to come up in that area there. It's a little finicky because you got to go back and forth with your hand. Okay. And then I'm just going to put that in place where I want it. Grab it with my thumb, I think. And then I'm going to go back down like that. So that. Come back up. And just sew it across this little strap. I'm not. I'm gonna go about a half an inch um, in a strip there. These little things might be a little too short for me to hide into the inside, but um, I'll do the best that I can after I'm done here. Okay, so I'm gonna come back up. I like a double strand because um, instead of going back and forth eight times, I'm just gonna probably do four. And then I'm gonna go or instead of 10, five or 12, six, whichever, how many, many times you wanna go back and forth, you only have to do it half that amount now. Um, and I caught those little strings as I, ends as I was going in, so that's good. I'm gonna actually go over them one more time, and then I just have to cut off the ends. Just like so. Okay, and I'm gonna pull that tight. Then I'm gonna to go to the inside and you see all you have is a little line that's going back there. So it, it's not a it's not an ugly um, finish on the inside. It's it's if you watch where you're going and be careful where you um, insert your needle, you'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna get that through. Then I'm gonna put a knot in it. I'm gonna do that. Actually, I'm gonna try to go underneath a couple of those strands. I'm gonna do another knot, just like so. Then I'm going to Come back up to the front. Where's my needle? Well, that's what I wanted to do anyway. So come back up to the front and I'm gonna hide those yarn ends in the red strap. In the red strap like that, rather than in the white strap because then they'll peek through and you'll see the color. Mind you, it's on the inside, so it really doesn't matter, but this is what I'm gonna do, okay? I'm gonna hide it. I'm gonna cut off these two little ends because I tightened them really tight with the uh, yarn that I wound around. Okay, so I'm going to turn that back to the right side. That doesn't look very long, but it's perfect because you want it to be the length of this when it's not, uh, that's, that's, the, that's just how it should be, okay? When it's, when it's not pulled tight, that's about how you want it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other side, and as soon as I get that done on the other side, I will see you back, okay? So go ahead and finish both of those sides just like that, and uh, we are making some great progress. Yahoo! <laughs> okay, see you back soon. All right, so now that you've got them both sewn, you've got your two straps on each side and they're both secured, top and the bottom. You don't have to worry about um, them being twisted a little bit. That's totally fine, it actually adds to the look. But you're going to grab those two ends, just like that, and you're gonna pull. And when you pull, it closes the bag. And you have such a, and then there's handles there for the kids to put over their back or for the adults to put over their back and you've got a beautiful backpack. Okay, so now we're going to go from there and we are going to embellish it. We're going to put some hearts on the front. We're going to do some duplicate stitching, just a few here and there. And, uh, and we're going to, I've got an easy pattern. You can take a screenshot of it. I'm going to post that before we get going on the duplicate stitch. Um, I'm going to show you the pattern for that. And, uh, 
And I do have a pattern on my channel that shows, or a video that shows you how to do the duplicate stitch, but I'm gonna start it here with you anyway. So um, get your color that you want, you know, pink, red, whatever it is that you're choosing for colored hearts, purple, whatever it is, and uh, let's get going. Okay, so for the duplicate stitch, we are going to need two colors. Um, if you are a beginner at this and you've not done duplicate stitch before and you only wanna do one color, that's fine too. Then just do this pink right here, okay? So um, the main heart consists of, on the top row, there are one, two, then there's a space, and three, four. Then right underneath that first stitch, you're gonna start one here and you're gonna do until you have five in that row. Then you're gonna miss this one and there's three and then one. So that is your, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, and one. That's your main heart, okay? I just did an outline around it just so you could see. And then you're gonna take your red and you're gonna just outline along the border. So here's the two that go right above your first two stitches and then the two here. And then down the side there's two and down this side there's two. And then one, 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 and one. Oh, and there's one here too that I didn't color. Let me um, grab my red. Right here, I thought this looked a little bit wrong. Okay, so then there's that one and there's one more. <laughs> uh, and right here. Okay, so it's all along the border. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 um, red stitches, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 red stitches, okay? and so. I've had this on here long enough, take a screenshot of it, and then you can draw it out in your book and then it'll be easy for you to, to see. But it's really a quick pattern, um, the heart is. And this is what it looks like. Let me just raise this again. Shadows, oh my goodness, I've got to find a way to take care of this because I, let me just see if I can, um, there we go. I'm just gonna remove that light there. Move it up a little bit and that helps. Okay, so here's what I've done. That exact same pattern. We've got um, two at the top row, two at the neck over here. And you can, no, I would, never mind, forget. I was just gonna say you could do two and then switch to red and do two, but don't do that. Do all your pink first and then go around and do your border of your outline, okay? So we've done, I've done three on this side and, I'm, and I just randomly picked where they were gonna go. And now I'm going to just add another one onto this side and we'll do that together. All right, so I'm going to choose to put it um, we got to make sure that our uh, which we choose a column where the, the wide part of the V is going up, okay? If you choose a column where the wide is down, you've, you've, got, you've got it wrong and you're not going to get a duplicate stitch that looks correct, okay? So again, look up my video on how to do the duplicate stitch and, and you will be able to figure that one out, no problem. Okay, so I'm going to just choose a space. I'm going to just go, I think, maybe here. So I, I never measured this out and, and planned it out. I'm just only visually, okay? And so I put this fairly close to where I'm coming up, but I'm coming up in this point, and so this is the stitch I wanna duplicate, so I'm gonna go above it. And then I duplicated that one side of that stitch, and then I'm gonna go back down. So this is the first one here. Now I'm gonna do a row of three. So I'm gonna come, put my hook in, or my needle in. I'm going to come up to this one here, because that's one row higher, okay? So I am in this little point here and I wanna duplicate this stitch, which is one row higher than this stitch. I wanna duplicate that one, so I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna go up one more. Okay, come back in. Then I'm gonna go through the point of the one to the left of it. And I'm not pulling tight. I'm just pulling so that it 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 uh, matches the fabric there, but I, I don't wanna pull it tight. And then I'm gonna do three in this row. Because this is a small pattern, I'm gonna go back and forth from right to left and then left to right. Generally, I'll always work from right to left if it's at all possible, especially on a bigger project. Um, but uh, it works out fine on this one. But you you figure out how you wanna do it. If you wanna carry, if you wanna carry this into here and then come all the way up to this point, you can. Um, I'm gonna go right over to this one, okay? So if I go across, then this is the same row. I know I wanna go up one. And I'm only going through one layer I'm not going through all the layers, just one layer. 
I don't want to see the the um, stitches on the other side, on the inside. Okay. And now this row has five. So one, and then into the point of these stitches here, two. Miss the stitch that I want to do and go above it and then come back down. Oops, I don't want to snag that. Okay, and I need one more in this row. There's five in that row. If you look at your chart, you'll see that there's five in that row. Okay, duplicating this stitch, so I'm going to go up to this one above it. Okay, now I've done that. Now I just need to do two and two, so this, the top row is right above this last stitch. So when I go into this point, I'm just gonna go right up into that next point, just like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna miss that next stitch and I'm gonna do this one, go down, come across, and I'm going under the white bars that are, I'm not just going under the pink, I'm going under the white as well for any stitch that I'll show you in one second. Okay, so now I'm coming down I'm gonna go into this stitch here. So to get to this point here, I went under the pink and the white. I didn't just go under the pink. Went under the white and then the pink, okay? So one, two, and then I know I gotta miss one. So I shouldn't have come up into that point. So I'm gonna go back down and I'm gonna come up into this point. Oops, I knocked the camera. Let's just make sure it's not off, okay? Oh, I'm doing that really low on the screen, on the camera screen. So I hope that this, that this is, um, easy enough for you to see. Okay, so now I'm almost done. My pink, that's how quick it is to do these beautiful little hearts. Oh my goodness, so cute. So then I'm going to, I'm going to actually take this into the back, that thread into the back. Not just into the inside of the, um, of the work. And then I'm going to take this one And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to just poke it into the inside of the work, okay? Then I'm going to turn it inside out. And I want them to be really close together. So I'm going to, I'm going to take this yarn end and I'm going to feed it back where I just had brought it out. And I'm going to bring it up right close to that one with one little bar. See, there's a bar right in between. So that when I tie off my knot here um, and then hide my ends, it can't loosen the stitches. Like if I didn't tie this knot and I just hid my ends, I'd have a long, I'd have a loose strand in there that would that would eventually make my stitches loose. So we don't want that. So I'm going to, so make sure there's a little bar because I'll show you how you can hide it. I'm going to cut that off. Then you're going to um, thread your needle again, and you're going to go right into that same space, either the top or the first where the first. Uh, Either, either one of those yarn um, ends and then you're going to pull it through and then you're just going to lift up on this and you really can't see that at all and then cut this off and that yarn end is hidden now you can go back around now like I said if you if you only want to do the pink you can just leave it like that and have little hearts all over um, and if you want to do more than three on a side you go ahead and do more than three. Do as many as you like. Make it your own. Um, you might want to pattern them in a better, like in, in a way that uh, is systematic, so to speak, for you. Um, however you choose to do it. But that's how I'm doing my hearts. Now I'm going to put the red around here. I won't do that on camera. But I also chose to do um, a duplicate stitch around just underneath where um, the cord is here. And all it is is one row of, of duplicate stitch. Okay, So one row right across um, these ones look higher, but that's just because this is pulling, um, one row right across all the way around. Okay. And so then when that's done, you can pull on, pull on your straps and look at that. It's just so cute. Such an adorable bag, but I'm not done because I think embellishments are important. So when I was in the dollar store today, I found this little, um, I'm going to cut this little guy off. I found this little guy. For a dollar seventy-five, you find what you can find, but you shake them, or 
Yeah, you squeeze them and he flickers and glitters. So I'm gonna put a keychain on there and I'm gonna hang it on my bag. It's red, it doesn't look red when the lights are shining, but but it is red and so I'm gonna have that hanging too. So you'll, you've seen that in the picture um, at the beginning of the video. So there you have it. That is a, a, a bag that we just made and it's a beautiful, beautiful bag. Make it in whatever colors you want um, and just uh, be creative. And be sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet, and please head on over to Koala Knits and Knacks on um, uh, Facebook groups and join join that group. It's, it's my group here, there, and it's growing very, very quickly. Um, it's a new group, but Put your work on there and uh, show us what you've done. You know, I, what I was just thinking as, as um, I'm talking to you is that um, it would be nice to have maybe three that don't have the the red border and three that do. Now that I've done five of them, I'm going to do this one, but that's a, that would be a nice idea too. And if you want to go ahead and put it on the back, you can as well. I, I'm choosing not to, but you can do that. And there you have it. Thanks for watching, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and have a great day.